and her speeding fine, or driving awareness course that she preferred. Um, to dis dis discuss this further, I must say, I do think this is a bit of a storm in a teacup, but let's see what my panellists think. We've got former Labour special adviser Paul Richards and media commentator Russell Quirk. Who should I go with first? Russell, Russell, tell me now. Do you think, like me, this may be a little bit of a storm in a teacup? Has she really done anything that terrible? Uh, look, this is a complete non-story, in my opinion, uh, bearing in mind that this speeding offence was 12 months ago. In fact, she wasn't even Home Secretary. She was Attorney General. Um, uh, there is much speculation also about her asking, apparently, about the fine that might be imposed for a speeding offence being claimable under expenses. Um, the, the critics of Suella Braverman, of which there are many, including, of course, many in the civil service. That's no coincidence that we're seeing this story today and also no coincidence, in my opinion, Emily, that this comes after Swella Braverman's speech at the National mm. Conservatism Conference. Um, but the question that she asked of um, IPSA about speeding fines was a question she asked in 2015. It was eight years ago. So, look, is it normal for someone to get caught for speeding? In an ideal world, of course, we shouldn't get caught for speeding, but I don't know many people that haven't. She apparently, the truth of it is, was offered, as many people are, the choice of either points and a fine or a speed awareness course. So she was offered that choice. She initially discussed with civil servants, perhaps slightly naively, whether the speed awareness course could simply be done as a one-to-one -one online rather than on a Zoom call or face-to-face to face with lots of other mm. people because of her profile. That, that's not only completely reasonable, but if you talk to Nick Freeman, you know, Mr. Loophole, uh, who I'm sure you've spoken to on GB News in the past, mm -hmm. he said it's a completely normal thing for high profile clients to ask of their lawyers and is something that those lawyers often get granted. There is no case to answer here, Emma. Um, well, Paul, I think you'll take a take a different different view on this, but to me, it seems she broke no laws. She did end up taking the points. Is it quite normal for such a high profile character, particularly controversial as well, government minister, to, uh, to, to want to, um, to have a private session rather than a public one? Well, this isn't about speeding. It's about uh, misuse of the relationship between a senior minister and their civil service. And we have an independent, neutral civil service in the UK. It doesn't do the political bidding of ministers. Um, and for her to ask was wrong. But the ingredient to this story that hasn't come out yet, which is why we need an inquiry, is that she then asked her special advisor to ask the question, can you have this sort of special privileged one-to-one -one had anyone even heard of that before today? I hadn't. I've been on a speed awareness course. I didn't get a chance to do it on my own. So the use of the special advisor needs to be investigated as well, which is why Labour is saying, let's bring in Sir Laurie Magnus. He's the guy Sunak has put in charge of these kinds of inquiries where there is a potential breach of the, of the ministerial code. And let's ask that question is why the special advisor, who is funded by the taxpayer, don't forget, is not a party political appointment, mm. why the special advisor was asked uh, and did request this special treatment. Russell, has Paul got a, got a point there? It's, it's one rule for, for Suella and another rule for the rest of us. Should she get such a special privilege? Well, it, as I've already said, it's not a special privilege. It is something that is available if lawyers ask it of the, uh, the speed awareness uh, team on the basis of there perhaps being some sensitivities around but, the individual. But Russell, should she be asking question? her political aides? Should she be asking civil ser servants and, and political aides to help her with this type of thing that is a private matter, isn't it? Emily, I think the clue is in the word aid isn't it? Um, that's what aides should be doing. Um, and look, whether it's no, appropriate it for the civil service to be doing it or not, or whether it should be a political advisor who's employed by the Conservative Party, not by, uh, by the civil service and the taxpayer. Um, I don't think it makes a jot of difference. This is the left making a storm in a, in a ticker. I, su I suggest that the reason that this has popped up, exactly the same as we've seen with Dominic Raab and Steve Barkley and Priti Patel, this is no coincidence, this is Brexiteers that are being targeted, frankly, by by Ramonas in the civil service. That's why this has been leaked. Uh, they're now out to get Suella Braverman. And as I say, no coincidence that this happens just a few days after her barnstorming speech. Uh, in fact, where she criticised her boss, mm. Rishi Sunak, 
with regard to immigration and the lack of control therein. So look, I, I wouldn't speculate perhaps as far as to say that this is uh, this this sits at the hands of Rishi Sunak having leaked this, um, but someone's leaked it in a timely fashion to discredit Suella Braverman. It is no big mm. deal. We've got to kind of get over ourselves, I think, don't you? We've got other things to be worrying about in the country yeah, rather I, than I, a minister's skin condition. Well, I, I, I certainly do think that it's quite remarkable that Rishi Sunak was asked about this by not one, but two journalists at the G7 summit. And unsurprisingly, he said, do you have any do you have any matters to ask me about uh, that relate to what I'm doing at the moment? Um, but no. Um, Paul, now you may think it sounds a bit conspiratorial to think, oh, you know, this is leaked in order to get rid of Suella, that there's a political agenda here, blah, blah, blah. But can you see how it might appear so? Because we've seen Suella Braverman, she's an extremely controversial character. Many people ha really don't want her to be in the position of the Home Office. They find her thoroughly offensive for one reason or another. She did also have that speech at the Conservative conference the other day. Do you think there's some truth to this? Would you concede that, Paul? Well, who, I mean, who knows? You know, we all know, don't we, that things get leaked uh, against people that other people don't like in politics. I mean, I'm yeah. a special advisor. You know, this is what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, most of the newspapers are filled with stories that other people have put there um, about people they don't like. However, that doesn't get past the point that she is alleged to have done something in breach of the code, which is why there needs to be an inquiry, so that we're yeah. not speculating, we're not debating it, and we're not building up conspiracy conspiracy theories, we'll get a senior person, Sir Laurie Magnus, whose job this is, to look at it and to see whether or not she you misused the relationship. She asked civil servants to do something which they said no, because it was an in improper request, and then used a special advisor instead, which would be equally improper in my view as a former special advisor. Your reporter from Ferrum down there in the constituencies said it doesn't pass the smell test. And I think that's mm. one of the key things now. It just doesn't smell right, does it, that the Attorney General and now Home Secretary, the person in charge of upholding our law and the rest of us, you know, uh, are under the same law as everyone yeah. else, um, seems to have tried to behave in this very high-handed manner. Yeah, I mean, for her, Russell, just ask me, she could have, sorry, Russell, she could have just, you know, admitted the offence, taken the three points and avoided all this, couldn't she? Which she's done, which she's now but, done. I sorry, mean, after, clear, you know, asking... Sir Braverman, Suella Bravman has not broken any laws. And look, here we get mission creep. No disrespect to my colleague here. Um, we get mission creep, the inference being that the Home Secretary, who you know is responsible for law and order, has broken the law. Apart from the speeding indiscretion, which is an absolute minor indiscretion, she has not broken the law in asking one or two aides for advice as to what she should do about the, uh, the appearance of a speed awareness course. That is not breaking the law and frankly I well, think she's the accused of breaking the ministerial code about this. yes well she's the public accused don't care about this of, stuff. of breaking the ministerial code the problem with these kind of stories is that one assumes that people from the opposition are obviously going to come down hard on her ask for an inquiry etc etc it all gets eaten up it eats up so much media time most people at home probably scratching their heads and you're probably okay. going to think this is overblown if you support Suella generally and you're probably not going to if you were uh, if you support Labour or an opposition party but there you go we shall see how this unfolds. Thank you very much indeed, Russell Quirk there. And of course, we had also, we had, I'm very sorry, we had Paul Richards there, who is a former Labour special.